wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Hey everybody, how's it going? Steve here. Uh, one hell of a day. My boy's tonsils uh, were removed this morning. I've been up since about four, and uh, there wasn't much room for me to sleep in the room with him, so my wife's in the hospital with him tonight. Hopefully he comes home tomorrow. But I don't want to fall behind on the podcast, and oddly enough, uh, with him out of the house, I can actually talk <laughs> and not keep him awake. And I can record in the living room without you hearing the sounds of uh, tractors rolling around on the floor and, and things like that. How have you been progressing? Um, you know, when you ask that question, that could take on a number of, of forms. So, so I'm progressing in some ways much more rapidly than in others, uh, I myself. So for me, I think my anger has been more in control since I've studied, studying, uh, philosophy as a way of life. Um, but I have actually, uh, had a shift in the, in my relationship to, um, to, to alcohol a bit and, um, and also perhaps to my favorite food, which is, uh, extra sharp cheddar cheese, uh, which I've tried to reduce, uh, my consumption of, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I've changed some of my eating habits, um, I've not gone full on uh, vegan like some of the modern Stoics are recommending, but I have shifted a bit. I mean, I I, ha I get a, a freezer full of beef every year from my dad for Christmas, and so I haven't I haven't really uh, shunned that yet. But um, but I have I have had more vegetarian food, and I try to eat more and more meat. Like uh, not more and more meat. Let me rephrase that. The meat I do eat. I try. And I'm trying to make uh, sure this happens in the future as I progress, that that meat comes from sources um, that I'm okay with. I often take one step forward and two back uh, in my attempts to progress, but I have been keeping a rudimentary journal. Sometimes it has nothing but the date and how much I weighed, which is one of the things I'm tracking. And that's not, you know, great. But I have never been a good journal keeper, and I'm trying to keep keep a little bit of a journal anyway uh, with my son uh, a two-year-old uh, and with a job that requires me to read and you know get lectures ready and things like that I have been reading here or there in stoicism uh, sto you know within the literature of stoicism mostly I've been reading the dialogues of Seneca I've been reading uh, Xenophon's memorabilia of Socrates which I've really been enjoying um and uh, I try to keep up each week with Massimo's <laughs> podcast. There's a plug for you. Um, I'm sure all of you already subscribed to that one. Now, while I do keep Stoic principles in mind more than I used to, because now it's you know becoming more and more ingrained, I still sometimes though you know lose sight of them and and then slip. But I'm getting better at using them to stop my tendency to overreact. It's better to prevent overreacting than it's easier to prevent overreacting than it is to stop it. I think you know when something goes bad and you just instantly or I well me is I instantly become enraged. So one of my main vices is anger. I get frustrated, and it can easily turn into a white hot temper that results in me saying or doing things that I that a sane person would not do. A sane Steve would not have done that. Would not have said that to his wife. Would not have yelled that, would not have thrown that wrench, <laughs> uh, would not have broken that uh, thing he had been working on. Now, today's episode is going to focus on a essay from Seneca on anger. It's a long essay, and I don't want to have tons and tons of text, but I do have some text here. I just think it's good to hear some of his ideas. So we're going to hear his advice on conquering anger or at least controlling it if you have a hard time ending it completely. Firstly, Seneca points out that anger is a form of madness and it can affect one person or an entire nation. Some of the wisest men have, in consequence of this 
called anger a short madness, for it is equally devoid of self-control, regardless of decorum, forgetful of kinship, obstinately engrossed in whatever it begins to do, deaf to reason and advice, excited by trifling causes, awkward at perceiving what is true and just, and very like a falling rock which breaks itself to pieces upon the very thing which it crushes. Next, if you choose to view its results and the mischief that it does, no plague has cost the human race more dear. You will see slaughterings and poisonings, accusations and counter-accusations, sacking of cities, ruin of whole peoples, the persons of princes sold into slavery by auction, torches applied to roofs, and fires not merely confined within city walls, but making whole tracts of country glow with hostile flame. See the foundations of the most celebrated cities, hardly now to be discerned. They were ruined by anger. See deserts extending for many miles without an inhabitant. They have been desolated by anger. I think that speaks for itself, that passage. Anger is a brief form of madness, and it's true. When you are angry, you can break yourself to pieces against the very thing you're you're crushing. You don't you can just not care and give one iota of reason anymore. There's just this one goal now to hurt the thing that hurt you or to inflict pain on the thing that has frustrated you. And and it's it could lead to horrible outcomes. Next, Seneca thinks that anger is a human con- is a human emotion. Other animals experience impulses like anger, but he doesn't consider it true anger. I think it's just worth noting. He says, It follows from this that their impulses and outbreaks are violent, and that they do not feel fear, anxieties, grief, or anger, but some semblances of these feelings. Wherefore, they quickly drop them and adopt the converse of them. They graze after showing the most vehement rage and terror, and after bellowing and plunging, they straightway sink into quiet sleep. So Seneca's view is that animals don't share quite as much of that divine reason as we do, and they can fly off the handle to defend themselves or to, uh, you know, try to win a mate, but they can quickly just forget about it and switch tasks and go to sleep or start grazing. Whereas a human being tends to stew and to think about anger and to become worse over time often rather than just instantly let things go. So then he asks, well, animals have something like anger. Humans have anger. Is anger according to nature? And he says, whether it be according to nature will become evident if we consider man's nature. Then which what is more gentle while it is in the proper condition? Yet what is more cruel than anger? What is more affectionate to others than man? What is more savage against them than anger? Mankind is born for mutual assistance. Anger for mutual ruin. The former loves society. The latter, estrangement. The one loves to do good. The other to do harm. The one to help even strangers. The other to attack even its dearest friends. The one is ready to sacrifice itself for the good of others, the other to plunge into peril provided it drags others with it. May it not be that although anger be not natural, it may be right to adopt it, because it often proves useful? It rouses the spirit and excites it, and courage does nothing grand in war without it, unless its flame be supplied from this source. This is the goad which stirs up bold men and sends them to encounter perils. Some, therefore, consider it to be best to control anger, not to banish it entirely, but to cut off its extravagances and force it to keep within useful bounds. In the first place, it is easier to banish dangerous passions than to rule them. It is easier not to admit them than to keep them in order when admitted, For when they have established themselves in in the possession of the mind, they are more powerful than the lawful ruler, and will in no wise permit themselves to be weakened or abridged. In the next place, reason herself, which holds the reins, is only strong when she remains apart from the passions. 
If she mixes and befouls herself with them, she becomes no longer able to restrain those whom she might have once cleared out of her path. For the mind, when once excited and shaken up, goes whither the passions drive it. There are certain things whose beginnings lie in our power, but when developed, drag us along by their own force and leave us no retreat. So what Seneca's saying here is that the natural way that humans should be is benevolent and kind, but anger is our opposite of, of what the best of humanity is. The best of humanity helps strangers. The worst of anger kills our friends and family. He goes on then to say that while some think that it's best to harness anger, I think maybe Aristotle said this, I'm not a philosopher, so bear with me, but it's best to harness our anger and to make it do our bidding. Seneca says no, getting rid of it is easier than ruling it. And and he says that that uh, there's a well there's a warning here. Some things uh, like like impressions that we get are easier to uh, eliminate immediately, but if we let them grow, they can grow into a monster that can control our reason. So so some things reason might have cleared out of her path early on, but we've let them grow and become seated in our minds, and now they are overruling reason. So. Seneca really thinks that reason is far more powerful than anger. So some might say you need anger to, you know, get mad enough to act. And he says, no, anger can have all these other consequences. You can act with reason and accomplish your goals. He does not agree with that idea. He says, it is important to know how great and fresh its strength may be and whether it can be driven forcibly back and suppressed, or whether we must give it way until its first storm blow over, lest it sweep away uh, with our remedies themselves. So what he's saying here, as he'll say in the next line, we have to know how to deal with anger. We have to know our own personal demon, right? We all are going to respond to various treatments differently. Um, We know if we can push it back swallow it, if you will, which may not be the wisest thing. Um, We know whether we must just let it do its thing. Maybe we should walk away from people and just scream into a an empty room and then come back and and rejoin society. Only we know what really will work for us because we are not sages. We may not be able to banish it completely. Or we may have at least a hell of a time doing that. We must deal with each case according to each man's character. Some yield to entreaties. Others are rendered arrogant and masterful by submission. We may frighten some men out of their anger, while some may be turned from their purpose by reproaches, some by acknowledging oneself to be in the wrong, some by shame, and some by delay, a tardy remedy for a hasty disorder, which we ought only use when others have failed." For other passions admit of having their case put off, and may be healed at a later date. But the eager and self-destructive violence of anger does not grow up by slow degrees, but reaches its full height as soon as it begins. So there are ways we can deal with anger. We might have to see ourselves in a video becoming angry and going, oh my gosh, that's ugly. I, that, no, no more. I'm not. I am not that person. I will not be that person again. That might be one way. Others might need to be chastised by someone else. He says, maybe you can try to delay it or put it off, but that doesn't usually work very well uh, because anger tends to go from zero to full power instantly. He says, it passes over no time of life. No race of men is exempt from it. Some nations have been saved from the knowledge of luxury by the blessing of poverty. Some, through their active and wandering habits, have escaped from sloth. Those whose manners are unpolished and whose life is rustic know not the chicanery and fraud from all the evils to which the courts of law give birth. But there is no race which is not excited by anger, which is equally powerful with the Greeks and barbarians and just as ruinous among law-abiding folk as among those whose law is only that of the stronger." Finally, the other passions seize upon individuals. Anger is the only one which sometimes possesses a whole state. 
No doubt, you say, anger is very powerful and ruinous. Point out, therefore, how it may be cured. Yet, as I stated in my former books, Aristotle stands forth in defense of anger and forbids it to be uprooted, saying that it is the spur of virtue, and when it is taken away, our minds become weaponless and slow to attempt great exploits. It is therefore essential to prove its unseemliness and ferocity and place distinctly before our eyes how monstrous a thing it is that one man should rage against another. With that frantic violence he rushes to destroy alike himself and his foe and overthrows those very things whose fall he himself must share. It is worse than luxury because luxury enjoys its own pleasure, while anger enjoys another's pain. So no matter who you are, Seneca is saying here, no matter who you are or where you come from, you can be brought down by anger. It removes our human humanity. It leads us to war, causes us to ignore the consequences of our actions. Aristotle thought it was like the fuel that spurs you to virtue. And we can see, you know, I can see that. Like, let's think slavery, people getting pissed off and saying no more, you know, civil rights movement, things like that. But perhaps there is a calmer, more human way to arrive at those same conclusions. So some, a bit of a summary here from, from Seneca, uh, in terms of what you can do to overcome anger. So some of his ideas are um, just thinking about the irrationality and uselessness of anger might help you get rid of it. Uh, for other people, seeing themselves angry in a mirror might do it. However, if you're prone to anger still, he has a few suggestions. One, live with even-tempered people. They will not provoke you. And just like vice can rub off on you, so can their virtue. So... Pay attention to mentors who keep their temper. If you're prone to anger, avoid occupations that might provoke anger, or at least stop when your mind is weary and spend some time reading poetry or do other soothing pursuits. So once again, Seneca often offers advice from the purely uh, stoic uh, perspective and then gives you real world examples, like something a real person can do and live up to. Like, okay, so you're not a sage. You're getting upset with something. It's, it's late. All right. Put your pen down. Shut your book. Read some poetry. I don't know. Watch Breaking Bad. I don't know. Do something. Get away for a little bit. You just, you gotta, you gotta do something. I'll listen to music. He also says, avoid hunger and thirst if you're prone to anger because we only have so much willpower. And if something's making you mad and you're hungry or thirsty, it's all the more likely you're going to lose control. Watch yourself and apply remedies as soon as you notice a problem. That's a big thing. And that's kind of, you know, very stoic there. Watch yourself. Be aware of yourself. Be mindful of your own feelings and your thoughts and notice when a problem starts. Because if you can notice it starting, maybe you can stop it before it explodes. He also says that people do not all take offense in the same way. You ought to know where your own weak point is and guard that weak spot weak point with a special care. So if you can't stand insults, then don't ever read the comments on your YouTube videos, right? Or whatever. You know what triggers you. Guard it. Maybe you can work on it and be better at it, but maybe you just have to, you know, that's a soft spot. You need to put some armor over that and, uh, and protect that spot perhaps. And he also says it's better not to see or hear everything. This is actually really good advice in our modern era. It's better not to see or hear everything. Many cases of offense pass by us, most of which are disregarded by the man who ignores them. If you don't want to be mad, don't be inquisitive. Once again, if you don't want to be mad, don't ask your friend what somebody else said about you. If you don't want to be mad, don't read the comments on your blog post. Because if you're not inquisitive, you're not going to hear the their comments and, you know, you can move on your merry way. So he says, fight hard with yourself. If you can't conquer your anger, don't let it conquer you. 
And one thing he suggests is now this, I don't know what modern psychologists would say about this, but he says, if you feel anger, refuse to show it, show its opposite. Instead, if you're feeling really mad, start smiling and whistling. <laughs> and, and, uh, he says, if you put on the opposite posture, anger will subside. He says our outward expressions will influence our in- inward demeanor. And then he says, work to change your attitude. And he writes, How better is it to heal an injury than to avenge it? Revenge takes up much time and throws itself in the way of many injuries while it is smarting under one. We all retain our anger longer than we feel our hurt. How far better it were to take the opposite course and not meet one mischief by another. Would anyone think himself to be in his perfect mind if he were to return kicks to a mule or bites to a dog? So remember, other people are hurting you out of their own ignorance or what they think is right. And if you want to get revenge on them, you're going to get hurt like five or six more times trying to avenge an old injury. And you're, (laughs) you know, it's like kicking a mule back or biting a dog back. It's like, what are you doing? (laughs) <laughs> what 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 are you what are you really accomplishing here by by behaving this way? Change your attitude, change your perspective. Seneca suggests we learn to handle being uncomfortable. Um, for example, uh, so, uh, someone who owns a slave, he says, might be offended when they are insulted by the slave, and yet this same slave owner might insult their own superiors all the time. They don't see the parallels here. Um, someone might freak out when they see dirt on the wall of their home, but they don't freak out when they see dirt on the wall of, on a building outside because it's a different perspective. They're, they're not used to being uncomfortable or, 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 and they're not used to putting things in perspective. So he says, learn to handle being uncomfortable. Um, get used to hearing insults. It's okay to be insulted. Learn to put things in perspective, smile at insults. It's character building. Anyway, so some advice from Seneca. Uh, walk away if you need to from anger, if you can't control it. Put on a happy face in the in the face of anger until you get through it. Um, fight with yourself. Don't give up. Follow the advice of other people around you who are good at not becoming overly angry. Don't get yourself too hungry or thirsty. Don't work yourself too dang hard. Maybe you'll you'll learn to calm down a little bit. Hopefully I will. Anyway, there's more to it than that. This is a pretty big read uh, in terms of a, a piece of Stoic writing. Uh, you know, it's it's not that big, but um, it's more than I'm going to read on, on the podcast all in one go. But there's a lot written about it. Um, you can find your own bits of advice not covered here on this podcast, but I suggest you check it out. Seneca is got a lot of really good um, psychological advice, advice on how how to apply stoicism to your life, but then while you're working on it, other tricks you can do to kind of get to the same ends of stoicism uh, while you're trying to become a stage. Anyway, I hope you have a good, uh, great week, a stoic week. Um, please consider supporting the show on Patreon, you know, posting, uh, hosting the show, the podcast gets expensive. Eventually I'm going to run out of room and I'm going to have to delete old episodes or pay more money to keep all the episodes hosted at once, but we're not there yet, but it's something I'm, I'm, you know, could happen in the near future. I have to, I don't know exactly how many hours I have left, but things like that do add up. And, you know, I, I, I do have some patrons and I have just enough patrons right now to pay the bills and, uh, to have a slight, a small fund in case my microphone breaks. But, uh, but you know, I'm not making Jordan, Jordan Peterson kind of money here. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Jordan Peterson, I don't really know the guy, so I'm not going to comment on Jordan Peterson other than I know he's popular either for being loved or hated by all kinds of people. And uh, I could do a show on it if if you want, but I'd have to actually watch some of his videos to develop an opinion. But uh, I did find out one thing. Uh, he and I went to the same college in Canada, so... Uh, the University of Alberta. So uh, we went. We have the same alma mater up there. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> anyway, uh, I appreciate uh, everything and keep cool. Stay stoic. Carpe diem.
Welcome to the Stoic Cosmopolis, a podcast for Sunday Stoic patrons.